Well, well, well. Good morning, Green and Columbia County. We're back. And uh, welcome to the WGXC Morning Show. It is Monday. So on Monday, we review the news of the Twin County area with journalist Supreme Paul Smart is in the house. Well, what can I say in terms of, I mean, journalistically, what you see is what you get this weekend. <laughs> it, it was a gorgeous weekend, and that was reflected in everybody's mood. Okay, so Israel went and bombed Syria. <laughs> uh, you know, the, uh. the, you know, if you look at things on a local level, which is in many ways how one should as a way of living life in a in a true democracy and republic, you know, it, it was a pretty glorious weekend. Um, you know, the there was lots of events going on here in uh, Hudson. It was the third annual Ramp Festival, and they had 19 restaurants participating. And you know, from what we hear, a pretty good crowd down at Basilica Hudson. Um, it was also the uh, uh, fifth annual Hudson Children's Book Festival, which they're saying is the largest such book festival in the state. Which um, I, I still have to to uh, you know stand back when you know sit myself down when I hear that. It's but getting larger every year. It has it really been absolutely is. been growing. You know there are crop walks in Kinderhook and Cooksacky that did better than usual. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was uh, the Boy Scouts over here in uh, what they call the Twin Rivers Council of the Boy Scouts of America. And it's I had not realized that we have uh, the river cr- provides a separation point that on the other side of the river you have the Rip Van Winkle Council, uh, which is doing its big uh, weekend next uh, or big campery next weekend on Saturday night before Mother's Day. Heavens forbid how they came up with that time, <laughs> and heavens forbid hearing the uh, the weather report. If I'm going to be sleeping out there, uh, you know, in the rain, in it's the bad rain. enough that they're all saying, you know, why are you bringing your uh, your air mattress? I'm saying <laughs> because. I'm in my 50s, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I need the air mattress. That's but, right. <laughs> um, you know, but anyway, there was a big spring campery for the uh, Mohican District of the Twin Rivers Council. It took place over at uh, Lake Taconic State Park over the weekend. Um, there was uh, uh, a lot of actually people camping. I was up in the Catskills over the weekend, and there are quite a few people camping out there. Um, the summer brochures are coming out from our various uh, non for profits and uh, counties. There are village cleanups going on. If anybody was paying attention, there are an awful lot of old and, and kind of gorgeous looking classic cars running around. Uh, the back roads of the area, that's because Rhinebeck had its first of the season classic car shows. Uh, that was down at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds, which is just to our south. And I everybody. love those classic car shows. I know. And they, I, I'd love it when you're, you're driving along and you say, whoa, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, right. And then you say, oh, okay, I know what's going on. <laughs> um, it was also uh, farmer's markets were kicking off around the area. Chris Gibson, as usual, seemed to be everywhere. I think there's five of him. It, and, you know, it's it's odd that you should say that because I was looking reading the news this morning and I'm saying, and you know, I I know this guy was military, but he, he you know what he a, spreads himself. Yep, he he was. You know, I, I saw him twice on Friday in two different counties. But you know who's traveling around with him quite a bit these days and into areas that are not even in his jurisdiction is uh, Pete Lopez, the mm-hmm. assemblyman from over in Green County, and. It, my suspicion is that he's being groomed for either state senate or, or I know Gibson has uh, set himself with term limits, so maybe maybe Pete's. I wish. Uh, well, never mind. That's a different subject. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, you, you know, our system um, almost demands uh, that if you want any juice from your area, that your congressman stay in office because yes. he, if he if he doesn't have seniority. Uh, he's got. He doesn't have as much juice as the guy who hangs around in Congress for twenty years. I know uh, it's, it's a crazy system, but that's the way it is. 
Yep. Yep. Um, the other th- oh, just <coughs> another sidelight was that um, you know which you usually don't pay attention to, but the um, Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus was up in Albany, and it's always kind of a cool event because they come in by train. Uh, they didn't parade the elephants through town this time, but they paraded them back last night. Uh. And um, but it's important in this area because. All these school kids from around here go up for it. We went up on Friday night, and uh, they have this thing where kids are allowed on, you know, to meet the clowns. They're allowed. They put a giant bouncy house there in the uh, center ring, and they just suck the money right out of your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, everything is geared. It's it's like a uh, you know they have an exclusive contract for the lemonade and the peanuts, et mm-hmm. cetera. And it was uh, d- danged if I couldn't find a lemonade for less than fifteen dollars. <laughs> but I used to bring my children uh, to Thirty uh, Fourth Street because when uh, Ringling Brothers came to Madison Square Garden, the train w- could not come into Manhattan, so they would walk the large animals through the Midtown Tunnel wow. and down Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, it, it happened in the middle of the night, uh, about 12 or 1 o'clock, and the elephants would come parading down. So if you had too much to drink in a bar on 34th Street, uh-huh. <laughs> and you walked outside and you saw elephants, you really did see elephants. Well, I, I, I recall, and, and this is before kind of our current era of uh, heightened insurance wariness, um, we would go, the Cole Brothers... Circus used to travel around the South where we were, uh, Cole Brothers Clyde Beatty Circus, and it was one of the last of the really big tent circuses, and they would come through, and if you showed up at 4.30 in the morning, you'd help them set up the tents and get free tickets and be able to hang out with all the clowns and the animals and the roustabouts and Mm -hmm. the carnies and... It just it, We did that once, and it's one of those indelible memories that stuck with me forever. Um, but something that's never going to happen again, probably. <laughs> uh, you know, some other things that kind of set the mood last week uh, around the area, you know, is National Day of Prayer, which is one of those things that is a big... Um, to do down in uh, in Washington, yeah. where every you know, sort of like wearing a flag pin, mm-hmm. but it's also a big thing up here in small towns and counties doing observation ceremonies, and it it still means a lot to the local community. Um, there was also it was Spirit Week at Hudson High School. Everyone's uh, all the kids around are starting to gear up towards proms and the like. Uh, you know, they're they're renting dress you know renting tuxedos getting their dresses in order um, at the Catskill Community Center uh, WGXC board uh, uh, council member Matt Bua and uh, Laura Anderson who runs the after school programs at the Catskill Community Center started doing a um, series of workshops on designing a new indoor playground space for Catskill and. Uh, that's going to be going on for six weeks. I believe they met Friday evening, and what they're aiming towards is doing a. Um, they're going to build what the kids come up with on June fifteenth and sixteenth. And at this point, they have just under a dozen kids involved. But uh, anyone out there who has an interest in in kind of s- helping shape an indoor playground for uh, Green County. Head on over there on Friday evenings to the Catskill Community mm. Center. All right. Um, it was also Mike Tyson, the former heavyweight champ, uh, stopped by Village Pizza in Catskill on Tuesday oh, afternoon. Oh, wow. And uh, he was in town. He's shooting scenes for a, a, a documentary for Fox Sports on uh, being Mike Tyson. And, uh, you know, you have to remember that he kind of got his start there. He came up as, right. as a kid, and uh, we've had a lot of. Uh, stuff on the radio about Customato, his trainer, and uh, Kevin Rooney, who's still around. And um, I don't believe Rooney came out on on uh, Tuesday, but um, you know that was a big thing for anybody who spotted him uh, in town. Oh um, yeah, that must have been great. And then uh, you know, while we're talking about conflagrations and stuff, which for some reason Mike Tyson always reminds me that <laughs> you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> Um, it's just a reminder that uh, we're still in wildfire fire danger zone, at least uh, 
uh, into next week. Uh, it's, if it starts to rain later in the week, you know, the problem is that it, it, it creates a break in this uh, uh, span of wonderful weather that we've been having, but it's actually good for all of us. Uh, the burn bans are on until uh, May 14th, um, so just pay attention to that. It'll take me that long to finish cleaning up my yard. Yeah, yeah, for what I hear, yeah, there's plenty there. I, I've just been trying to mow the sticks. Um, you, know, uh, you know, another thing, uh, kind of a sign of a shift that's going on out there is that there was a, um, a, a, a hearing in Hudson last week on, um, uh, you know, on fracking and, uh, you know, where we stand as a state and locally. And it had a very light turnout. In the past, this was the big thing. It seems that it's it's passing over at this point. That um, the big issue f that I see coming in right now, and this is not so much in Columbia and Green yet, but um, it's really big in uh, Dutch in Dutchess County and, and huge in Ulster County is a growing sense of outrage and uh, resistance to um, this Fortis uh, Central Hudson merger. Yeah. Fortis yeah. is a huge Canadian power company and um, it comes down to a sense of local responsibility. People wanting their power companies to have a greater sense of, of uh, the local about them. Um, you know, Colum Central Hudson was actually very good at responding to things, uh, as we saw it, to a certain extent during Irene, but particularly during Sandy. And they also had a way of kind of sharing the wealth. And there's a lot of worry that uh, this huge conglomerate out of Canada just won't have that same sense of responsibility and immediacy in terms of reacting to the needs of the local community. So well, opposition to the merger is growing. It really is, mm -hmm. yeah. And it's uh, a number of towns have passed uh, uh, memorial what they call memorializing resolutions mm -hmm. against it. And just look at that, pa you know, growing. And that is probably partly a, a reaction to the uh, um, sense of awareness that was uh, risen by the whole fracking issue in recent years. Uh, years, and also by the fact that the the fracking thing seemed to seems to have gotten caught up in politics on a state level, um, which may have relieved some of the immediacy of it as a um, uh, an ongoing public issue. Uh, another kind of sidelight on that, and uh, I was going to speak about this later, but it seems kind of better is that the state. Um, Department of Environmental Conservation announced, uh, I think it was $1.6 million in grants going out to uh, land conservancies around the state, with um, the large chunk of them going uh, within the greater Hudson River, both the, what they call the Capital District and, and the Hudson River District, of which I think about half of all the f funding went into our basic area. Um, this was going uh, to smaller land conservancies uh, with most of the money going towards uh, raising more funds. There's a match involved. Um, you know, some of it went towards active programs or the initiation or publicizing of active programs. Um, here in our area, there's a land conservancy based in Cooksaki that got uh, a sizable, I think it was about $25,000, $20,000, and um, the cons uh, Columbia Land Conservancy got a decent uh, amount as well. And then there were larger chunks of funds that went to uh, the Catskill Center for Conservation Development, which is based up in uh, Delaware County but affects the entire area. And, and quite a bit went towards um, the Farmland Trust and other uh, areas based in uh, other uh, organizations based up in Albany, which are dedicated to preserving uh, agricultural land and presence in our region. So that that's kind of a a, a big item. Um, the other thing everybody was talking about last week, and I first heard about it through uh, kids at a at a little league practice, was about the plane that went down in the Hudson yeah. uh, last Thursday evening. We, I was driving up Route 9W, and there were just you know, uh, emergency vehicles just streaming down. Um, it turns out the pilot was a, uh, 
Uh, Michael Bronstein was a 72-year-old man from Copake, and nobody knows what caused the crash. It ignited. Um, the, the difficulty was that there was uh, uh, fuel on the water, which uh, hampered the uh, recovery in the dive operations uh for a couple days there but you know it always throws people when you know the, the river pulls somebody in yeah uh, well, the, the hudson river looks docile yes but it is not <laughs> no no it's it, it's a major thing it's a um you know there is also uh um kind of looking in our blogosphere area uh sam pratt um, you know who was so instrumental in the the fight against um, St. Lawrence Cement here in Hudson um, has a thing on his blog in which he's uh, found in a article in the Albany Times Union mentioned that um, TCI the P, uh, large company that was based up in Ghent which had the the horrendous fire plant fire last summer where which. You know, it turns out there was a lot of PCBs mm -hmm. being handled there, and it, it scared the dickens out of everybody. There's mention now um, that the company, uh, which has been having trouble trying to go through a planning process to rebuild, that they're now looking um, at Rensselaer County uh, and moving up to either Gr East Greenbush, Rensselaer, or Skodak. Uh, meanwhile, um, you know, Sam's kind of continuing his investigation into... Uh, the company's history in Greene County, and it turns out that they, you know, there were tr lots of trouble signs before the explosion itself. Ah, uh, and so maybe the people in Rensselaer won't be sitting there with uh, with uh, uh, yellow ribbons waiting for them to come. Yeah, I mean, you know, it could be another one of those companies that goes to West Virginia. <laughs> yeah. but, um, you know, the big thing also that we're uh, um, we're leading up to the May 21st uh, school elections when um, new school boards or new members to, to local school boards will be elected and uh, proposed budgets will get the up or down. Um, the indications right now is that this is not going to be a, a big down year, that uh, most of the local schools have stayed within their uh, 2% um, uh, tax cap uh, provisions, you know, that are mandated by the state, or if they're going over, they they're going up to four percent with a sense that the community's supportive. Um, there are some very uh, tight and interesting school board races uh, around the area. Um, the city of Hudson just uh, Hudson School District just uh, outlined its big race is going to be a. a uh, a retired science teacher, a reading mentor, uh, a retired uh, high school custodian, and a, um, and a current incumbent board of education member and a parent of a high school student, all vying for two um, five-year uh, board seats. Uh, the biggest one around the area is uh, probably over in um, Cairo Durham where there's a, a redistricting issue and a lot of parents are up in arms about it. There's going to be a, um, I'm not sure if it's going to be live or not, but there's a, a Meet the Candidates event a week from Wednesday. That's on the, the 14th. Yeah, and I believe WGXC is going to be in the house. Okay, yep, yep, they will be, yeah. Oh, the 15th, I believe that's the 15th. Wednesday the 15th. Yep. Um, and, you know, the the other thing that's been happening over the past week and is pretty much uh, complete at this point is that uh, village boards have been uh, passing their budgets for the coming year, and most of those have been uh, no great controversy. Everybody, the tax cap, when it first came in, everybody is grumbling about um, – you know, how can we be staying, you know, within these uh, uh, restrictions without mandate uh, relief of any sort? But um, at this point, everyone's doing it. They're finding ways of squirreling money away <laughs> to cover certain expenses. There is a, co I mean, and we still voice it here, uh, continuing concern about some of the larger infrastructure needs in our villages and towns and, right. you know, states and counties. But hopefully at some point we'll get to those a lot of those have been coming up we've no i've noticed in recent years through uh separate referendum items that come on the budget um you know on a village level they'll often come up in november at a different election right. time and it's a way of uh kind of presenting them to a uh 
less of a of a voting populace. Right. So, you know, the, the, the tricks of making democracy work. Um, speaking of that, you know, there's still a lot of uh, talk out there around the SAFE Act, which was uh, the uh, Governor Cuomo's reaction to uh, the Newtown, Connecticut uh, shootings last December and, you know, the, otherwise known as, um, you know, kind of the new gun laws, which, um, you know, for many people are don't seem strict enough for those who are kind of uh obsessed with the second amendment they're just you know outrageous um you know the latest thing in in columbia county there was a uh new law out on the books that would allow uh county officials to be able to carry guns on county property which um you know there's some of us that just you know you hear something like that and uh Old Westerns come to mind. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's a new online uh, poll at the uh, Hudson and um, Catskill newspapers uh, asking people whether they go along with this or not. And by a slight percentage, people are like, yes, yes, you know, everybody mm -hmm. should be carrying a gun. Uh, you know, l let's see how this, you know, whether, uh, you know, the forces of kind of deep conscious con can, you know, how they do a fair against you know this uh, need for uh, manly protection at all costs. Well, it's all going to be resolved in the courts one way or another. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's simultaneous to this, um, you know, I get email alerts on what's going on within uh, you know what used to be called the Tea Party and has kind of evolved in recent years with all in the last few months with all this um, uh, Second Amendment talk. Uh, the big issue there now is about grand juries and whether uh, uh, grand juries can be given more power where people can just uh, uh, indict on their own. And it's uh, this, uh, you know, I started to do oh some God. research into it and, uh, you know, realize this is something that's, that's very American and the rest of the world and many here in this country see as being just kind of weird and dangerous. And uh, But there's this great push to be able to, you know, indict uh, President Obama to indict, you know, anybody one wants to. So just pay attention to that. And, and, and a lot of it underlying it, uh, when you read deep into these emails that are passing around, uh, there's a, still worry about uh, this United Nations Agenda 21 stuff where uh, people are just worried that um, all this talk of sustainability means that we're giving up control to the United Nations and foreigners. So. Mm. You know, I, I, my sense is that it all somehow folds into the immigration discussion and a lot of other issues that are out there. Um, you know, some other things that are out there. Oh, there's a, in, in Hudson, the council uh, is has been looking at um, there was a legal committee uh, mandate brought up to uh, require that all that the city publish every local law, ordinance, rule and regulation. Uh, that comes up in its local designated newspapers, and there's some reaction to that. You know, on the one hand, they're saying it's too expensive, and you know, but what you're dealing with there is just that underlying principle of sunshine that uh, we're allowed to see it. I mean, right. I think that maybe the best thing there is that instead of requiring that it be uh, printed, that uh, it, you know, it'd be available. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah and, and on the uh, internet. On the internet, but also I think you have to have it because you have to remember that I'd say about 50% of our uh, oh, residents of the true. area aren't internet savvy. Right. You know, maybe they should, we should just read it over the news. Uh, over the <laughs> news <laughs> that, that would take care of the morning show for a while. Um, that's, uh, you know, the, this coming weekend, of course, is Mother's Day. Yep. Um, you know, as I said, I'm going to be, you know, with the Boy Scouts <laughs> <laughs> on the night before. Um, I've also got, actually, I'll just give a plug. I usually don't do this, but Wednesday's my work, sh the work show yep, that I you do. Yeah, you got your work show coming up. We're doing that on, on Mother's Day. I've talked to kind of a long-term uh, mother and then somebody who does is a professional daycare. Uh, she does daycare. She ah. serves as a monitor on buses. She does a lot of babysitting, and she has four, three of her own kids. Um, yeah, and then I talked a little bit to, to my own seven-year-old son and his best friend about what they think parents do and mothers do. <laughs> <laughs> that know, part ought to be interesting. What's the job? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You know, everybody out there is getting ready for cicadas. This is the year of cicadas. So the, be, if you think that train that goes by here makes a lot of noise, just you wait. That's a, a one whirring sounds like, like helicopters taking off. And by the way, on, on toast with jam, they're delicious. Okay, I have not tried that I just yet. said that to be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Going back into the, kind of the history, according to, to the uh, always fascinating Wikipedia, it was on this date 100 years ago uh, in the American Civil War, or 150 years ago in the American Civil War, that the Battle of, of Chancellorville ended with um, the defeat of the Army of the Potomac, the Union forces by Confederates. That was got everybody... Pretty worried. Um, <laughs> of course, that all turned around that summer in Gettysburg, but we'll be hearing more about that later uh, in the coming months. Uh, on this date in 1882, the U.S. Congress passed um, one of its, I guess, many kind of uh, you know uh, pieces of legislation that later proved a bit embarrassing, uh, the Chinese Exclusion Act. Yeah. Um, on this date in 1889, the Eiffel Tower was officially open to the public uh, at the oui. Universal Exposition in Paris. Ooh la la. <laughs> um, on this date in 1935, uh, Executive Order 7034 out of the uh, federal government created the Works Progress Administration, which is uh, for some people is still one of the highlights of, of <laughs> American culture. Um, and just, uh, you know, the, the sense of federal responsibility and what we can do uh, as a culture. And then on this date in uh, 1996, um, you know, this is an odd one. The, the body of former CIA director William Colby was found washed up on a riverbank in Maryland eight days after he disappeared. And what makes this kind of pertinent up here was that, um, uh, you know, I was never able to find the the you know, a huge amount of facts around it, but uh, Colby supposedly kept the place up near Jewett in Greene County, a, a, um, a rural retreat. And, um, you know, I heard about this through neighbors and the like. It was, it's very hush-hush. There's no, um, uh, very, pretty much nothing on it in writing. But if anybody ever has any, uh, comments or anything about Col uh, William Colby's uh, CIA presence in Greene County, give us a call. Let us know. That that would be an interesting little story. I'm convinced that all roads lead to Greene and Columbia County. Yep. Well, th <laughs> that is true. That is definitely true. But, you know, then the question is where exactly, where in Greene and Columbia County do they lead? Looking back into uh, the past uh, birthdays, um, Today's the birthday of Sigmund Freud, who was born on this day in 1856. Think about it. <laughs> um, also the birthday in 1902 of my favorite uh, film director, Max Ophels, whose uh, son also became a great uh, documentary filmmaker. Uh, Max Ophels you know, made this uh, La Ronde, and uh, um, you know, many consider Lola Montez one of the great films of all time, The Earrings of Madame de... Uh, and then in kind of the pop culture music world, uh, uh, the singer-songwriter uh, Jimmy Dale Gilmore, um, and then uh, Bob Seger, uh, who I believe you'll be playing some of at some point this morning. And what then, Bob Seger song did you want to hear? Uh, I Will Accompany You. I Will Accompany You. Oh, and then in, in uh, actually turning 60 today is uh, the former prime minister of the UK, uh, Tony Blair. So, uh, you know, that will have people thinking as well. And th that's sort of the wrap up this week. Next week, uh, when we do this, uh, we'll focus uh, much more succinctly on what's going on around the area in terms of the May 21st uh, school board and school budget elections. All right. Thank you very, uh, very much, uh, uh, Paul Smart. You're listening to WGXC 90.7 FM. And, um...